Welcome back to Android Q&A. My name is Jace, and this is where we try and answer your most pressing Android questions. And imagine for a moment if you are now a new dad for the first time, and your wife has just heroically given birth to your first child, and someone captures this precious moment. Yeah, you're going to be enjoying that photo for many years to come, right? No because your data has been wiped from the cloud, wiped from your hard drives, gone. You, my friend, have been hacked. Happens every day. And the problem is people don't know what's a real threat and what's just fear-mongering. Is the NSA really reading your texts? When it comes to privacy and security, what is a real threat? That and more coming up. Don't worry, we're gonna take care of you. So, my dear friends, please meet Matt Honan. And if you haven't heard of Matt's story before, in his own words, he says, in the space of one hour, his complete digital life was destroyed. First, my Google account was taken over, then deleted. Next, my Twitter account was compromised and used as a platform to broadcast racist and homophobic messages. Worst of all, my Apple ID account was broken into and my hackers used it to remotely erase all my data on my phone, my tablet, and my computer. You see, Matt made the mistake of leaving himself very vulnerable. But to be fair, how many of us do all the same things? In many ways, this was all my fault. My accounts were daisy-chained together. Getting into Amazon let my hackers into Apple ID account, which helped them get into my Gmail, which gave them access to my Twitter. Had I used two-factor authentication for my Google account, it's possible that none of this would have happened, because their ultimate goal was to take over my Twitter account and wreak havoc. Lulls. So Matt lost many of his most precious digital items because of what's called social engineering. What is social engineering? Social engineering is the process by which a hacker must go through to guess your passwords for your social media profiles. So of course you're not silly enough to put out your password or post your password somewhere that can be hacked, but you do provide public information about your birthday, your children's names, your children's birthdays, where you went for uh, your honeymoon vacation, for example. Information that is often used in passwords. So, once they gather this information, they put it through a program that will generate possible passwords. They try hundreds, thousands of combinations until they find the right one. That's the process of social engineering. So if you're one of those people who think that this is too far-fetched and difficult for a hacker to do, oh, how naive you are. Check out the most popular passwords for 2013. It doesn't inspire confidence. My personal favorites, one, two, three, four, five, six, password, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and I love you. All right, let's get real practical and talk about the top three things we all need to do to protect our passwords. Seriously, you gotta start doing them because you can't come back to me and complain that you lost your favorite pick of you and Luke Perry. <laughs> Luke Perry's probably glad they're gone. So not only should you not use any of these simple passwords, but you don't want to use anything that could be socially engineered, like your pet's name, the name of your child, your birthday, or any birthday of a family member. Number two, do use alphanumeric case-sensitive combinations. Instead of using Jace Loves Tech, you want to make it complicated enough that it's extremely hard for any hacker to deduce and meaningful enough for you to remember. So One Serious Geek is a better example because it not only uses eight characters, lots of alphanumeric combinations, but it's relevant to me. Now, if you feel that that password is too complicated to remember, that brings us to our third and final point. You really need to consider using a password protection program like LastPass. Now, LastPass does not sponsor this show. They're not paying me anything to say this. Uh, you can use other programs that are free. Some are premium. I know LastPass. And what LastPass does, and other programs like it, is that they uh, take one secure password. You only have to remember one very secure password, like the option I gave you earlier. And it generates passwords on its own for all your social media profiles. You don't need to remember them. LastPass does that for you. Super, super helpful and secure. So now it does leave you vulnerable with that one uh, password. If someone gets to that password, you're in deep, deep trouble. That's why you need to follow those guidelines in creating a super secure password. 
Now, of course, there is two-factor authentication when it comes to using Google services, and that is very secure, very helpful. Uh, I do recommend that. I don't use it personally, though, because it is a massive pain in the butt. It's very time-consuming. So you guys got to make your own judgment call there. So now we come to Big Brother. Is Big Brother watching you? Do they care to read your text to your mother? Well, yes, sort of. It works a little something like this. Documents obtained by the Washington Post indicate that the National Security Agency is collecting billions of records a day to track the location of mobile phone users around the world. The NSA collects this location and travel habit data in order to target development to find unknown associates of targets it already knows about. To accomplish this, the NSA compiles information on a vast database of devices and their locations. Most of these collected by definition are suspected of no wrongdoing. Officials say they do not purposely collect USA phone locations in bulk, but a large number are swept up incidentally. So to translate that a little bit for you, no, there is no individual person on a phone or computer reading or watching your text in real time, but they are collecting your data, all of it, not just US citizens, everyone, everywhere. For what? Well, they don't really know, but they want all this information that they can assist and process through to find targeted information. But as the Washington Post found out, they're not just using it just for anti-terrorist uh, activities, they're using it for anything they want. There is no privacy. Privacy is done. Now comes the question, what do you do about it? Become Survivor Man. Live off the grid. Learn how to create a file with a bow drill. Yeah, go hardcore. That could work. And only a little bit more practical is the private browsing option in Firefox, the incognito mode extension for Chrome, and the in private browsing option feature for Internet Explorer. Now I did quite a bit of research and reading on this and there's a number of different avenues that you can take to increase your privacy a little bit. But I gotta tell you, I gotta be frank, there's really not much you can do as an individual to change this. Uh, the NSA and government agencies like them just have way too much money, way too much resources, and the political will to find out what they want to find out. The real solution is to change the culture and change the political will and make privacy a priority. Because right now, it's not. So y'all know I can't end on a sour note like that. So when I feel depressed and down, I turn to one thing, puppies. <laughs> Thanks for watching Android Army. My name is Jace. I would love to connect with you right here on Google Plus or Twitter. Read all my comments at replies. Yeah, tell me what you think of today's show. And don't forget about my brothers in Android. They work really hard. We have an awesome team now. We are about to hit a million subs, people. A million subs. That is more than 500,000 subs in the year that I've been here. This is my uh, one year anniversary now. Yeah. Don't forget about my brothers in Android, Josh, Joe, and the technician, Kevin, Lon, and Chris, all working really hard to deliver the best Android content on the web. I should see you next week on Android Q&A.